Hello everyone. While I'm doing better, I wanted to do two recordings. I uh, just did one on Guild Wars 2, now Diablo 4, and some game mechanics that I dearly miss. But uh, we'll go over all that here pretty soon. Um, so kind of a summary of what's going on to get you caught up in where things are uh, with Diablo 4. Diablo 4 has made some PR statements that scream microtransaction. Asmongold did a video on that if you want... Um, to listen to that, I will link it in the description. But more recently, since Asmongold's recording, there has been some other developments, such as season pass plans and a couple of other things that scream even more microtransactions. Unfortunately, it would seem that Blizzard slash Activision hasn't learned from Diablo Mortal and the things that people hate in general about microtransactions. But I guess a greedy company will not listen when money's involved. Oh well. Uh, so there's been that. Um, there's been more class reveals and Paragon system reveals since Asmongold's recording as well. So we do have more of a better picture of the classes involved. That's kind of the summary that's happened here so far. Now, uh, real quickly on the Asmongold video, since so I did mention it, I will agree with a lot of what he said. Um, I agree that Diablo 4 will just be microtransaction hungry, and you're just going to have to accept that if you really want to play Diablo. I also agree that you shouldn't be hyped for Diablo 4. I really don't. There's a lot more reasons than just the microtransactions that I feel is a reason to say I shouldn't be hyped for this and I should be asking for better with Activision Blizzard. Although I guess at this point it doesn't really matter because they don't listen. But we're going to go over that, and um, uh, I'm going to use the Rogue as an example. So one moment. Okay. So now that we understand the full extent of the rogue, um, I'll go and use this as an example. So you'll notice that the rogue is a mix mash of the different classes that have been present in Diablo. And I'll show you exactly where that's happening. So the whole idea of being able to switch between melee and range, that's nothing new. Amazon did that in Diablo 2. It was an original class in the Diablo 2. Next thing that is pretty obvious is in the enhancements. Scrolling down. This is what I'm referring to with enhancements. They call it imbue. Really, it's just <laughs> it's just uh, copy and paste, but imbue is slash enhancement is pretty much the same thing that Assassin was doing when Diablo 2 Lord of uh, Destruction was released. When Diablo II Lord of Destruction was released, they released two classes, the Assassin and the uh, Druid. The Assassin had enhancements such as being able to do additional fire damage or uh, the likes. So this whole imbue thing is actually just a copy and paste from Assassin is really what it is. So you can see that they're just copying and pasting once again. It's nothing new because if you look at even Diablo III, they did the exact same thing with Crusader. Crusader was nothing more than a copy and paste of the Paladin. That was specialized in shields, which, in my opinion, was a really bad way of handling it. And I'll go ahead and go over that now. So uh, this is another reason, to, in my opinion, not to be hyped, because they're bringing back the resource system. Um, and to be honest, I just would prefer that they handle the classes better overall, because there's a lot there's a lot of reasons that I miss the, the original Diablo 2. And, and one of them is the versatility. Because you see, the great thing about Diablo 2 classes is none of them were truly restricted to doing one thing. Not really. I mean, okay, maybe Sorceress was restricted to doing casting, but at least, you know, you had the choice of doing it with Fire, Ice, or other spells. And the same can be said for the other classes. Paladin had the ability to switch between two-handed or shield. It could do either one. And Amazon was nothing different. Amazon could switch between doing melee and ranged. So you had all these versatility options, but then when Diablo 3 rolled around, they just completely screwed that over by doing crap like Crusader, which meant that you can only do shield. And uh, that's a really crappy way of handling it. I think it should be about choices and versatility, being able to do builds the way you want to. And unfortunately, they have failed to do that with the most recent Diablos. But uh, kind of another thing to take from this is it's a bad sign. If they're copying and pasting this much, not just with Diablo, but also Call of Duty, that should tell you that they're running out of ideas or that they lack imagination in, with their current development team. 
Because if they're going to just do the same thing over and over again, uh, then that's that's really not uh, doing too terribly much. Also, all that stuff that they post in their um, videos, such as like the if you take over like this demon settlement or whatever, it becomes a human settlement thing. That's nothing new. Um, there have been plenty of other games that have done the exact same thing. So it tells me that they're not only copying and pasting from their prior games, but it also tells me that they're copying and, uh, copying and pasting from uh, games that came before it. So there's a lot of warning signs here, not just with the microtransaction, but also in um, the fact that they're copying and pasting is quite literally what they're doing. So... That's really all I can say on Diablo 4. Now, to kind of branch into something um, from past games, I want to talk about some past mechanics that have been used that I dearly miss and kind of would hope that they make a return. Diablo 4 would have been a great case to do some of this with, and that's why I want to kind of bring it up with Diablo 4. So, one second. I'll just tap back over there. Okay, so let's talk about some old, old mechanics. Or at least game options, I guess. Starting with the uh, Dark Age of Camelot, DOC for short. Dark Age of Camelot was a fantastic MMO for its time. It really set a new precedence for uh, being given so many options to build your character. Case in point, um, well, I should say an example. Uh, if you looked on the Albion side, they had two classes, the Paladin and Armsman, both of which could wield plate mail. But here's the thing is Dark Age of Camelot gave these two classes the option to use Chainmail, which is the armor that they would have been using up until the higher levels. Because you see in other MMOs, like World of Warcraft, for instance, the second warrior paladin made it to 40, plate mail was all they got. But that wasn't the case in Dark Age of Camelot. Once they reached 40, plate mail was just an option. If there were certain defenses or certain stats you wanted from Chainmail, you could totally wear that. And they supported that by giving you high-end chainmail options as well as high-end plate mail options so you could go in between the two even out to max level really great um, system that they had on Dark Age of Camelot I miss it dearly they did a lot of things right and I really <laughs> wished that more games had learned from them but Dark Age of Camelot gave an example of the equipment now let's look at an example of a mechanic one that I dearly miss it's called weapon reach Weapon Reach has been used in a couple of games on and off over the years, but in the last, I would say, maybe five, six years, they haven't used Weapon Reach, really. I mean, the only games that I can think of that had the Weapon Reach mechanic would have been um, Phantom Doctrine, which was 2016. Um, that indie game, I can't think of the name to right now, the one that uses the, the mech building one. Uh... Mech Assault or something like that. I can look it up later if need be. But these are really the only ones that I can think of in recent times that have used Weapon Reach. So what is Weapon Reach? Weapon Reach is when a particular weapon can reach X amount of squares. So if it said Weapon Reach 4, then that means that that weapon could reach four squares front, back, left, or right of the character's currently standing position. In the case of Diablo, I thought they could have incorporated that with the Amazon because it would have been really cool to see, you know, the Amazon getting Weapon Reach 4 with the Pikes and War Spears um, so that they could technically kite as a Meleer rather than having to resort to ranged right away. But, um, yeah, they I think they missed an opportunity to bring back Weapon Reach with Diablo because I think they could have done it with Diablo 4. Um... But I guess it's not going to happen, so... Either way, though, that's a mechanic I miss. Um, kind of another mechanic that I miss is directional blocking. That has been incorporated in a couple of games in the past. So what is directional blocking? Well, directional blocking means that you can guarantee block everything that's coming you at you in one direction. Usually it's a 90-degree cone. So that means the person would have had to flank you in order to get around that shield. I think directional blocking should have been brought back because, yes, while it is problematic in certain cir circumstances for the attacker, it's a better way of handling tanking. Because 
then at least you have a guaranteed source of um, blocking. Uh, the only game that I can think of that had this in recent times was War of the Roses. It's a now defunct game. I don't think anybody plays that anymore, but War of the Roses did that. And the way they kind of balanced uh, directional blocking was by um, giving the shield their ability. So after a certain amount of hits, the shield would break. Um, oh, and actually Elden Ring. Elden Ring di directional blocking, and they balanced it out by stamina. Um, each time you got hit, it drained from your stamina. So that's another way of balancing it out. But yeah, other than those, it really hasn't been games doing that as well. But I think that could have been like another thing they could have brought into Diablo 4 as well. Um, because if they really want to do a shield specialist paladin, then they could have just like done uh, block in the direction for like five seconds type of thing. I think that would have been a way to handle it, at least in Diablo 4's case. But either way, those are just a handful of mechanics that I dearly miss and would very much like to see a return. And I think that Diablo 4, as well as some other games, have missed a wonderful opportunity to bring back those mechanics. But for now, that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening.